Thank you. Thank you very much for your kind introduction. I'm very glad to be able to come to this country for the first time. This is uh, for us very far away. You know, <laughs> you may feel that from here to the United States is uh, far away, but the uh, distance from United States to uh, Japan is more. So you can guess, you know, how far for us to come here. Uh, today, I'd like to talk about the, uh, my university using three slides, and uh, then I will start my talk. I came from a city called Sendai, okay, here, which is about uh, 350 kilometers north of Tokyo. And do you remember the big earthquake of three years ago? It was uh, around here. Epicenter was here. So we are very close to the epicenter. And I think you saw many houses were floating because of the tsunami. That is my town. And uh, so my laboratory was also completely destroyed. Uh, the Sendai is about, the population is about uh, one million. And by using built train, it takes one hour and a half from Tokyo. And uh, my, to my university, uh, several foreign people visited. This is Lu Xin, he's a very famous, uh, this person is very famous in China. And uh, my university is uh, known in that um, uh, we accepted first female students here in 1913. At that time, Prime Minister uh, in, in my country looked down women. So he was against, he was against uh, to, uh, this uh, acceptance of uh, women, but uh, the president of uh, our university at that time, they said boys and girls must be equal. So he accepted this uh, female student. I talk this in particular in China. You know, in China, there is no such uh, freedom to say, yeah? But uh, I say in China, you know, my country, we can accept. And you know this person, he visited our university, and uh, on his way to Japan, he, he, at that time, he came by boat. He obtained, uh, he was informed that he obtained a Nobel Prize. And uh, here, uh, a couple of uh, Niels Bohr also visited my university. And uh, this is a citation, international ranking, just uh, briefly. My university is uh, very strong in the field of material science. This is, uh, also, this is number three. Number one is in China. China wants a big number. So about 10 years ago, many institutes and uh, uh, universities in Beijing get together under one name, in, and then they become number one, OK? Number two is uh, Max uh, Planck Gesellschaft. This is also an example of uh, many uh, institutes. As a single university, we are number one, OK? And uh, physics, uh, international ranking, physics 9, chemistry 15. But uh, this uh, is a little bit old. Many famous professors retired. And now this, this ranking is about 20. This is just somehow lowered. <coughs> uh, this indicates the size of uh, my university. You see the full professor is about 800. Uh, we accept uh, each year about uh, 2,000 students. And, uh, uh, and uh, uh, graduate course students, about uh, 1,500. So all together in my university, there are 17,000 students. Okay? And today, I'd like to talk on the synthesis, applications, and practical use of functional metal phthalocyanins. This compound, this is a structure of phthalocyanins. As you see, compared with normal porphyrins, this is a relative of porphyrins, and compared with normal porphyrins, there are additionally four benzene, four benzene, and this position is changed, replaced by nitrogen. In the case of a normal porphyrin, this, these positions are occupied by a carbon. Okay? But uh, this compound is a completely artificial compound. Now, <coughs> Uh, in this slide, I showed uh, some uh, uh, oxidation reaction catalyzed by heme enzymes. You know, I, I think you know heme proteins in our body. Heme is the uh, name given to uh, iron polyphenol in our body. And uh, here in this scheme, 
Uh, S is not sulfur. S is a substrate. Okay, is in this uh, slide. S is a not a sulfur. This is a uh, substrate. So, substrate and oxygen in the presence of oxidase. This is changed in this way, and uh, this substrate in the presence of uh, this amount of oxygen in the presence of oxidase it changes in this way. Uh, catalyze, uh, catalyze the uh, decomposition of hydrogen power oxide. This is known to be the uh, fastest reaction in nature, and the person who found this reaction obtained a Nobel Prize. Okay, and uh, yeah, and the SH2 plus hydrogen power oxide in the presence of a power oxidase, this is substrate, and they produce water. And uh, substrate plus oxygen in the presence of oxygenase, they are changed to an uh, oxidized compound. And in the presence of a monooxygenase, since this is a monooxygen, so uh, S plus O, yeah, we, we can obtain uh, this type of uh, uh, compound. Now, this, these reactions are catalyzed uh, in our body, okay, using uh, hemo ion porphyrins in our body. But uh, we, we wanted to use this, this reaction. Okay, and uh, when you synthesize compound, generally we can obtain the compound as a powder or so sometimes liquid. But of course, you know, powder, you know, we cannot use in a society so easily. Yeah, you can, uh, you can have uh, some powder, you can do a cooking, but for other purposes, powders cannot be used directly. So, but, uh, we obtained some uh, uh, polyphenol-like compounds. We decided to use uh, by connecting to a fiber or uh, fibers, and uh, we try to mimic the biological oxidation you, uh, by heme proteins. Uh, uh, sorry, the mimicry of biological oxidation by heme enzymes can be applied for a new technology to improve health, welfare, and the RC environment. We felt that oxidation reaction we can use in a society. Okay? What kind of a compound can be used in, the, in place of heme enzymes? Of course, you know, porphyrins, if you try to synthesize porphyrins, it's expensive. Porphyrins uh, contains uh, four pyrrol. Porphyrin contains four pyrrol, you know, here. Okay, four pyrrol here. Pyrrole, if you use pyrrole, 500 grams cost more than 200 US dollars. And the yield of the porphyrin reaction is less than 20. So, you know, such an expensive compound we cannot use in a society. So, we need an easily accessible uh, compound which can be obtained uh, in a uh, few steps in a high yield. And uh, in this case, since we wanted to use uh, fibers as uh, in order to support the, uh, these compounds, uh, we wanted to synthesize a water-soluble one which contains uh, carboxyl groups or sulfonyl groups. But uh, in our case, in this slide, I show you some results on uh, uh, compounds containing uh, carboxyl groups. And instead of uh, porphyrins, we decided to use uh, phthalocyanins because the phthalocyanins can be synthesized in a few steps, starting from a very uh, uh, cheap materials. So uh, phthalocyanins, uh, PC is an uh, abbreviation of phthalocyanins. Phthalocyanins can be synthesized using a very uh, cheap materials. This is a uh, uh, phthalic anhydride in the presence of urea. You know, phthalic anhydride is very cheap. Urea is also very cheap. And in the presence of some uh, metal compounds, if you, if you heat, we can obtain this compound directly, directly. Okay, and in, in Japan, nowadays, copper complex of this one is uh, in the company, they obtain this compound in the yield of 100%. You may not notice where these compounds are used. You, you, you know, the blue color of the chair you are sitting, blue color and the jeans, blue you know, color of jeans, and some paint, and some blue color of plastics, more than 90% of uh, uh, blue color comes from a copper complex of this one. And in the world, more than 50,000 tons of uh, copper complex have been produced annually, every year. Okay? 
So, you know, anyway, this compound can be synthesized very easily. Sometimes we need to use uh, other static materials, which can be obtained in this way. And uh, this is the cheapest material, static material, but this is the most expensive one. But uh, for example, silicon, uh, phthalocyanins containing silicon here can be obtained only by use of uh, this static materials. But anyway, so in the society, in the factory, they mostly use uh, this one. This is very cheap. Now, normal phthalocyanins uh, cannot be used to adsorb onto the uh, fiber so easily because the phthalocyanin solubility is very low. And so uh, we decided to synthesize these phthalocyanins. This is, by the way, this is the uh, hematoprocrine 9 we have in our body. You know, you have a uh, hemoglobin, myoglobin, catalase, and uh, cytochrome C, cytochrome B. All, almost all compounds contain the hemat hematoprocrine 9, okay, this compound. And uh, in the center, you can see an uh, iron. In our case, iron here. The, these are the compound I synthesized. This is a metal phthalocyanin containing four carboxyl groups. Uh, metal phthalocyanin containing uh, octa carboxyl groups. And uh, we, uh, in my experiment, I, we synthesized iron, cobalt, uh, manganese. But uh, <coughs> in a society, we can use uh, iron very easily. Cobalt. We cannot use, we cannot distribute on the uh, ground because it is considered to be uh, not good. Manganese, also they show some catalytic activity. Uh, the uh, catalytic activity is not always high. So anyway, we decide to synthesize mainly iron compounds. Synthesis again, very easy. You see, this, is, this compound is named uh, pyromeritic anhydride. Okay, this one, very cheap. Urea, and this is a molybdenum compound, this is a catalyst, and in the presence of iron or a cobalt uh, salt, any salt is okay, any salt is okay. And this is a solvent, 170 degree, one to two hour, we can obtain this compound. And then, you know, uh, hi after hydrolysis, by base, we change the pH to uh, acidic, then we can obtain this one. Okay, in a similar manner, starting from this one, we can obtain uh, this phthalocyanin. And then uh, by hydrolysis of uh, this uh, uh, amido, we can obtain this uh, phthalocyanin. So, uh, you know, very inexpensive, inexpensive and a few steps. And, uh, and this sheet shows, so we have to check whether our compound has a catalytic activity. Yeah, so we first we checked the uh, geol oxidation in the presence of our uh, metal phthalocyanins. Uh, sorry, uh, here is a, uh, some circle here. Metal in the center, sorry, phthalocyanins are here. Lines are so thin, it cannot be seen well. But the uh, metal here, phthalocyanin here, and the uh, RS minus coordinate to a metal. And in the presence of oxygen, oxygen is in the solution. Oxygen coordinate to the, from the upper side of the metal phthalocyanin. Okay, so uh, from upper side, oxygen coordinate. From lower side, uh, RS minus Chior coordinate. And uh, from electron transfer occurs from Chior to uh, oxygen, and uh, this RS radical make a dimer like this. Okay, make a dimer like this. On the other hand, this oxygen is uh, from a uh, uh, solution. From a uh, solution, he obtained uh, oxygen contain, obtains the uh, uh, hydrogen. It changes to hydrogen power oxide. Hydrogen power oxide coordinates from the, uh, uh, from the top of the phthalocyanin. This is, is uh, decomposed to uh, uh, water and oxygen by uh, catalyzer-like reactions. Okay, so uh, we found anyway that uh, our compound catalyzes uh, oxidation of uh, chior. Uh, we also checked whether our compound can uh, catalyze decomposition. This is, uh, you know, as I said, uh, uh, hydrogen power oxide decomposition is uh, uh, catalyzed by catalase. And uh, so we checked whether similar reaction occurs using our compound. In the case of iron, Phthalocyanin containing eight carboxyl groups compared with uh, hemin. Hemin is a 
name given to a uh, iron porphyrin to our body in the, our body. Hemin is in particular uh, iron three porphyrin. So the turnover number is a six here. But in the case of phthalocyanin uh, containing us uh, eight carboxyl groups, uh, 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 turnover number is 160. So you can see the activity of the, this compound is uh, 27 times higher than the uh, normal porphyrins. Okay, so we, we found that our compound has a catalyzer-like activity. And also we checked the uh, oxidation of the, this compound. This compound is a methoxy, orto methoxy phenol. Okay, so uh, this compound uh, in the solution coordinate to uh, uh, ion-3 uh, phthalocyanin, and uh, if there is a uh, uh, <coughs> hydrogen power oxide, hydrogen power oxide coordinate from the top, and uh, this compound coordinate from the bottom, they produce this intermediate. This, this compound is called guaiacol, so G coordinate here, from hydrogen power oxide coordinate here, and after all, they produce uh, this compound. Uh, volatility of this compound is much smaller than uh, alcohol. So, you know, anyway, uh, uh, the diffusion of uh, this compound to the air is uh, much smaller than this one. Uh, we found in this way that uh, uh, guaiacol is uh, oxidized, just like a power oxidizer like reaction. And uh, this is uh, just uh, one example of uh, manganese phthalocyanin using a polymer. And uh, in this case, phthalocyanin's content is about 1%. You see, this is uh, 98.7, this is 1.3. So this is about 1%. Phthalocyanin is only 1%. So we checked uh, the uh, catalytic reaction of uh, cyclohexane. Okay, and uh, this is uh, time zero. The, the concentration of this uh, compound is here. But after you know, five hours, the concentration of this one decreased in this way, and we found that the uh, product was this one. So uh, this manganese phthalocyanin uh, acted just like a monooxygenase. Now, <coughs> we checked uh, several reactions, uh, oxidation reactions using uh, aldehyde, uh, amine, and uh, chior and uh, you know, phenol type, guaiacol like this, and uh, oxygenase like reactions. We, we did it this way. We thought when we obtained these data, we can use these reactions uh, in a society. For example, some compounds have a very bad smell. You know, amines uh, smells badly, and also formaldehyde. This is a problem. When you build a new house, you, do you know uh, formaldehyde? syndrome, I don't know, you know, from uh, aldehyde is uh, uh, liberated from a wall to uh, air and uh, it uh, causes some sickness to us and it can decompose. So, uh, you know, these diseases can be uh, eliminated by using this compound. So, you know, some compounds like uh, chior, for example, uh, methane, uh, mercaptan, you know, this is very uh, smells very badly. So when we did this experiment, we, we thought we can use this experiment as a, for a deodorant. Okay, so as you see here, you know, as I wrote here, naturally occurring bad smelling substances such as mercaptan, aldehyde, indole, and scatol can be removed based on the in vivo oxidative reaction, you know, using our iron or cobalt phthalocyanin. And, um, <coughs> Anyway, I'll show you some uh, practical results, okay? So, as I said, powders we cannot use in a society directly, so we adsorbed our phthalocyanins onto, uh, in this case, uh, chitosan fiber here, and uh, or uh, amorphous rayon fiber here. Uh, uh, in this case, the uh, phthalocyanin is a cobalt uh, phthalocyanin, okay? And uh, this is a, a cartoon. Since uh, you know, our compounds contain a lot of uh, carboxyl groups and uh, fibers generally contain a, a lot of uh, you know, uh, OH groups, our compounds can be uh, uh, adsorbed onto the uh, fibers using the uh, hydrogen bonding very easily. 
And uh, when we measured the uh, EPR spectra of this compound, we could detect an EPR signal at very low temperature and found that the, uh, our, the circumstances uh, of the uh, ion is very close to that of the uh, catalase. As I said, catalase is uh, 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 catalyzes, catalyze, catalyze, catalyzes uh, the composition of hydrogen oxide, power oxide. And the hydrogen oxide, you know, oxygen oxygen bonding is cut by the uh, catalase. Now, oops, I'll skip. This is a picture of about 30 years ago. 30 years ago. Uh, women is collecting uh, air in a room, okay? There is a kettle, and uh, she has a plastic bag here. We, we call this bag as a tetra, tetra bag. I don't know why they call it this way. 1.5 liter uh, plastic bag. Sorry, uh, th this sheet is uh, Japanese, sorry. Uh, th this sheet shows the, uh, sorry, only this one, okay? <laughs> here, plastic bag, plastic bag here, okay? So she collected the air here, and then B here is a column, you can see a B column here. This is a part which contains a fiber dyed with a phthalocyanin. Diameter is uh, two centimeters, and the length is uh, about four to five centimeters. This is a liquid nitrogen here. So, you know, collected air is pushed out through here to here, and then they cool by using a uh, liquid nitrogen. And then it is evaporated, and it takes the, this gas is uh, collected by the uh, uh, sample syringe. And then the product is uh, analyzed using a uh, gas chromatography. These are the result, perfect result. Okay, removal of four order gases, gases of uh, collected air in a sewage treatment by uh, blah blah blah, other sort of rayon stable fiber. Ammonia is, uh, you see, removed 100%, dimethyl disulfide almost 100%, dimethyl sulfide 90%. Methyl mercaptan, hydrogen sulfide, you know, they are the, uh, uh, oxidized, yeah, de uh, decomposed in uh, such a high yield. So this is a good result as a start. And uh, this sheet shows uh, some results. Okay, elimination of typical four order gaseous substances in 1.5 liter tetra bag, plastic bag by uh, iron octacarboxy phthalocyanin adsorbed rayon stable fiber. I, I showed you the structure of the experiment before, right? Time zero here, okay, the concentration of uh, uh, hydrogen sulfide uh, ammonia, methyl mercaptan, uh, toriethyl amine here, and then here, time minutes here, one hour later, for example, uh, methyl mercaptan and uh, hydrogen sulfide, almost, you know, no, no uh, concentration here. So they are decomposed, you know, within one hour, in the case of uh, 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 amines like this, uh, they were decomposed about 80%. Uh, okay? Now, <coughs> so this sheet shows the uh, removable capacities of four other gaseous substances by uh, iron octacarboxy phthalocyanin supported staple rayon fiber. And uh, this is uh, shown relative to the activated carbon. Okay, the, so the activated carbon, uh, the reactivity is one. You know, in the refrigerator, in the, you have a refrigerator, yeah? And in the refrigerator, you use act, uh, activated charcoal to remove a uh, bad smell. And uh, so the, uh, the molecules which has bad smell, if these molecules are uh, adsorbed on the surface of a uh, 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 charcoal, then the activity goes uh, down. Yeah, we have to deactivate. In order to deactivate, we have to wash the surface of a charcoal. But uh, in this case, we don't need to wash. Okay, so the, compared with the uh, activated, activated charcoal, you see, uh, toriethylamine, ammonia, the, uh, Effectivity is uh, more than 20 times. Scatol, 130 times. Hormaldehyde, you know, more than 80. Methylmercaptan, um, hydrogen sulfide, almost 100 times. 
more effective. And now these are used in a society, uh, not only in Japan, I wrote here, not only in Japan, elderly people confined to bed often suffer from the order of uh, excretions. Okay? These are almost completely removed after one week. You know, old people, they are sent to uh, some uh, hospital-like place, we, you call hospice. Okay? And, uh, you know, all the people may smell some particular smell, but uh, don't worry, you too. You know, after, after 30, 30, before you get 40, this, uh, you, you start to liberate this smell, okay? But, uh, of course, all the people smell much more. But uh, this start before you get 40, okay? But anyway, so in such a place, we collected air in such a place, and uh, before, you know, ah, we used, this is a, how do I say, we call futon, cover or when you sleep. Okay, inside is a cotton, and the cotton is dyed with that phthalocyanin. Okay, so before the, the old people use this cover, the air contains a hydrogen sulfide, you know, 0 0.2, and a methyl mercaptan, you know, 0 0.4, blah, blah, blah. After one week, we couldn't detect this. We detected only uh, sulfide. Sulfide is, uh, cannot be oxidized more than this. But the other substances are completely decomposed. Nice. Right? And also, we made a part like this hip here and here, this part. Okay? This part contains a, a clothes containing a, this phthalocyanin. Okay? Of course, you know, when we get old, our skin smells. So before the experiment, damp skin, 23%, and the three, eight person of the, this number of people, eight people felt no change, but nobody felt worsened. Okay, offensive smell of urine, offensive smell of fences, you know, in this way. So not 100%, but anyway. Uh, people felt that the uh, air becomes uh, better. Okay? Now, so uh, this compound uh, has been synthesized uh, in a company in Japan, uh, but uh, as I said, you know, we, I gave a talk about that uh, compound more than 30 years ago, and our patent was already finished maybe seven years ago, and now, not only in Japan, Russia and China they have a company only to synthesize these compounds because they noticed that this compound is so nice. And these are the, some pictures of the uh, phthalocyanin adsorbed. This is a rayon fiber, uh, ion phthalocyanin, rayon fiber plus cobalt phthalocyanin, uh, cotton yarn plus uh, copper phthalocyanin, uh, cobalt phthalocyanin, uh, non woven cotton plus uh, ion phthalocyanin, uh, honeycomb form. Uh, uh, honeycomb form pulp. Yeah, so if we go, if the air can go through these, th this air can be uh, cleaned. And uh, now you can obtain uh, many products. For example, you know, this is a sleeping goods. I don't know how you call it, but this is a cover. We call it stone. Okay, inside it contains a uh, uh, cotton uh, adsorbed by phthalocyanins. This is a carton. But uh, generally, phthalocyanin is uh, blue or uh, green. Yeah? But uh, since the amount is so small, if we, we use an uh, orange carton inside, we can uh, absorb a very small amount of phthalocyanin. And then, the smell of uh, tobacco, smell of uh, poo, smell of, uh, smell of uh, ammonia, and smell of uh, aldehyde, these are all become clean. Okay? I will show you some data. This, this is an advertisement by company. Okay, they are using a, as a wall material or a wall paper containing our phthalocyanin. This is the, uh, how ammonia can be removed. Okay, so uh, Y axis here indicates a removal rate. Okay, time zero, time zero, this is our one day later Ammonia is decomposed completely. Nice, right? Ammonia, the smell of ammonia is the smell of urea. Okay? 
How about the methyl mercaptan? Methyl mercaptan is the smell of a rotten onion. Okay, this one day, you know, 70 to 80 percent is removed. How about hydrogen peroxide? Hydrogen peroxide is the smell of a rotten egg. And in one day, these are removed. Nice. Now, so our compound has been used in a bullet train. Since human being is an animal, if many people get together in a small space, it smells not so good. Yeah? So, uh, so in a ventilation system, very easy. You know, just add soap, we dissolve that phthalocyanin, di uh, dip in a, to a that solution, we dip a cotton, dry, remove water, dry, and then uh, in a ventilation system, if we have that compound, AI screen. Okay. Now we have uh, this compound has much more activity. Uh, we, I found uh, by reading uh, some uh, biological textbook, I found in the human red blood cells, bactericidal activities of uh, radical species in the presence of a lipid hydroperoxidase are generated by the action of ion compounds. I found this sentence in the biochemistry textbook. Yeah, so I thought, okay, let's try. Yeah, b because our compound is an ion compound. And uh, we used, so we checked whether our compound has a bactericidal functions in the presence of a, a tertiary butyl hydroperoxide. Yeah, yeah, tertiary butyl hydroxide. Now, now this sheet shows Cytosidal effect induced by a reaction of uh, uh, that uh, uh, hydroperoxide and the ion phthalocyanin against various bacteria. You see, e sorry, this, this is so small, so I just retyped here. Bacteria, this is the name of bacteria, staple focus uh, aureus. And the, I think you have heard MRSA. Have you ever heard MRSA? Because uh, if you eat a chicken, since uh, in the, uh, when they feed chicken, you know, they add a lot of uh, chemicals. Anti, anti, uh, anti, I forgot, uh, antibody. So uh, if you, get, uh, you eat this chicken, and uh, when you get a disease, you are sent to a hospital, even if you drink some medicine, it doesn't work. And uh, so for these, you know, bacteria, our phthalocyanin works very well. This is a column which shows the concentration of a phthalocyanin, ion phthalocyanin, zero, and this is a hydroperoxide. Please consider that this is the amount of oxygen. Okay, and that is the, we, by, in the presence of a hydroperoxide, if the concentration of hydroperoxide is high, this bacteria is killed by the oxidation. But in the, you know, in the presence of uh, this phthalocyanin, you see, uh, this is two plus, three plus means uh, this is very effective. So this is killed in the presence of a small amount of uh, phthalocyanins. In this way, many bacteria are killed. Many bacteria are killed. And uh, these, are, these are collected by a medical doctor. Uh, I, I don't know the details. Target bacteria is here. So, uh, uh, Staphylococcus uh, aureus, uh, aureus uh, Escherichia coli, you know, and these are, how do I say, killed. Bactericidal factor. This, this, these are corrected by uh, medical doctors. I don't know the details, but uh, you know, they say if this factor is uh, above 1.0, this means effective. All compounds show a very high activity and the bacteriostatic activity factor, this is another factor. In this case, if the factor is more than 2.2, they say this is effective. And you can see these compounds uh, can be activities, uh, factor is very high, indicating that uh, these uh, bacteria can be killed very effectively. Now, this is a result of the uh, young people's uh, socks. 
uh, in uh, summer, young people's athletic shoes they smells very badly, yeah, everywhere. Yeah? So after the practice, practice we asked students to wear two socks. Okay, two socks. One side socks, one side socks dyed with phthalocyanin. And another side without phthalocyanin. So one side with phthalocyanin, another side without phthalocyanin. And after that, we checked whether fungi is uh, grown or not. Okay? If you, people use uh, socks with phthalocyanin, no growth of fungi. You see nothing here. But uh, without phthalocyanin, you can see the growth of a fungi. Yeah? White. So we found that uh, um, by wearing uh, our socks, many uh, fungi is also, the, the growth of fungi is also uh, suppressed. So this is a picture of young people. So you can see, yeah? In the summer, he is just like this way, and uh, we now can obtain uh, this kind of socks by wearing these socks completely healed after 79 days. And this is the uh, result for the uh, bed uh, sore. All the people, you know, they cannot move, and they suffer from the bed sore. Start 32 days, you know, you see in this way cured, healed, and uh, this is a bandage. Uh, which are died by uh, iron phthalocyanins. Okay. Also, burn injury also can be cured. Okay, this is the start, 11 days, 42 days. You may say that uh, even if you don't, we don't use uh, that bandage, uh, after several days, uh, uh, burn injuries may be uh, healed, but we found you know, compared with non-treated patients, the healing time was shortened by 20 to 30 percent. Okay? And, and this, is, this is what we are guessing. Probably due to the prevention of bacteri bacterial growth. We also found that, you know, you get a big operation. You cut some part, and after that, if we use that uh, bandage, died with phthalocyanin, the healing time is shortened 20 to 30 percent. And we, we think because of the, uh, this bandage uh, will, uh, how do I say, uh, depress, will keep the, uh, this part clean. Yes, they stop the growth of the uh, bacteria. Yeah, so that's why the operated part uh, can be healed in a shorter time. Now, this is good, okay? Antiviral mask, uh, tested by Avian Influenza Center of Kyoto Sanyo University. As I said, when I gave a talk about that uh, result, many, many medical doctors, companies approached, more than 200 companies or hospitals approached us. This is a result of a very good result. Okay, so, uh, this university, okay, some people from this university checked whether uh, uh, human influenza viruses can be killed or not, okay? Be before, oh, and we used a mask, okay? This mask has a blue, uh, green color. This green is uh, that of the uh, iron phthalocyanin, octacarboxylic acid, and of course, you know, we, we use the two kinds of masks, one without phthalocyanin, one without phthalocyanin. Before experiments, the number of viruses is 10 to 6.25. I don't know how to count, medical doctors did, okay? I don't know how to count the viruses, but anyway, they did. 10 minutes later, of course, without phthalocyanin, same number. Okay, then if we use a mask dyed with a phthalocyanin, first number is the same, 10 to 6.25. 10 minutes later, less than 10. Inactivation score, 99.999. Beautiful, right? <laughs> How about next one? How about next one? So this is a bird flu, 
against bad flu, you know, bad influenza, bad flu, okay? So the number of uh, viruses before experiment 10 to 6.75. And uh, without starosanin, one minute later, 10 minutes later, same number. No viruses are killed. But with starosanin, one minute later, already, just 1%, 99% were killed. And then uh, 10 minutes later, less than 10 to 0.75. Inactivation score, 99.999. Nice. Perfect, right? So, uh, you know, I don't know how many years ago, maybe less than 10 years ago, uh, uh, swine flu, pig flu spread in Mexico. We sent this mask through a Mexican embassy in Tokyo. We sent uh, 20,000 masks to, to Mexico. And uh, when I gave uh, this talk in uh, Curitiba yesterday, the day before yesterday, yesterday, medical doctor came and he said, how about sending this to uh, Evora, Evora, Evora disease, yeah? So, uh, so after returning to Japan, I will think about that. Okay, so uh, we can make uh, underwear, just dye, you know, underwear dyed with uh, uh, starocyanin. And, uh, It has uh, several functions, as you see here. The cotton underwear processed with this starosyanin reduced itching and inflammation by oxidation of allergen protein and changed its structure to ones that will not cause itching. So small babies, for small babies who have some allergy, this works pretty well. This doesn't work for all uh, or allergy, but uh, you know, for heavy atomic uh, dermatitis, uh, uh, eczema score and uh, scratch mark score decreased in this way. So a uh, baby, the baby likes this, you know, because a uh, small baby in the summer, they have a problem. Ah, this, these are the result. Uh, carried out for, for, for men. Yeah, anti itch function of aftarosinin containing uh, textiles. Yeah? So the, this is a number of uh, patients. University Hospital A, 74. Private Hospital, 17. Hospital B, C, 21. All together, 142 patients. We, we use this, this underwear. And before experiment, I, I don't know whether you can see well, there are many white scratch marks, okay, scratch mark here, but after two weeks, completely healed, nice, right? So, <coughs> since, uh, <laughs> what we can do is uh, limited because uh, I'm not a medical doctor, and uh, medical doctor, they, they don't care about the mechanisms. They just uh, want us to know whether this is effective or not effective. Yeah? They just publish if they found, oh, this is effective. Allergen protein introduced by ticks into the body is enzymatically oxidized by this starosyanin on fiber, and its structure is changed to one with, which does not cause itching. Toxic protein produced by bacteria at the skin surface will react with this compound and its structure is changed to one which does not cause itching. Histamine or other itch-causing substances excluded from the scratch scar will be uh, absorbed by this starosyanin and enzymatically decomposed. This is what we are guessing from many uh, results we did, but uh, this is just a guess. Now in Japan we can obtain uh, many uh, products like this. Okay, for baby, you know, <laughs> for adult underwear. Ah, since, oh, okay, since our compound has a lot of activity, we examined whether this compound can decompose, uh, you know, halogenated compound. We wanted to try this experiment using dioxin. You know, dioxin is a very dangerous. 
So nobody did the experiment. I, I tried to find a person who can do an experiment using dioxin. Nobody. But so anyway, we decided to use this one. This is commercially available, trichlorophenol. Okay. This is a far in the time zero is a this concentration of this one, and uh, we just passed through the uh, karam, you know, sh short karam. I, I showed, uh, and uh, here only few minutes later, let's say five minutes later, this compound, this compound was decomposed and the concentration is almost zero. Okay, and we felt that uh, if this compound is decomposed it may be possible to detect the uh, chlorine from here. And so we de try to de uh, detect chlorine, chlorine here. Time zero, of course zero. And uh, with the oxidation proceed, you see in this way, the chlorine uh, liberated in this way. So we can say that uh, this compound was uh, nicely decomposed. In the many Japanese companies, they have uh, halogenated, halogenated, polychlorinated bifenyl. This is a problem in my country. Many companies keep this because they have to decompose. Someday they have to, you know, decompose. And uh, now, since our compound can decompose uh, th th these materials, and uh, in uh, Japan, th this is, uh, you know, some uh, people, some person, the human being is here. This type of a uh, pilot plant which decomposes a uh, polychlorinated bifenyl uh, we have this uh, in, in Japan almost in uh, 20 places. Okay, this is pr pretty nice. This is a photodynamic therapy, but uh, time given to me is only uh, 40 50 minutes, so it should stop, right? Yeah, if you are interested in, I can give a talk about uh, photodynamic therapy, but um, photodynamic therapy, I'll, I'll speak. B very briefly, okay? We inject, we inject porphyrin or phthalocyanin into our body, and then uh, this compound circulates our body, but uh, if there is a, a cancer cell, so this compound, phthalocyanin or porphyrin, is adsorbed onto the surface of a cancer cell, and to this cancer cell, we irradiate, irradiate light. In this way, we can kill cancer cell. We can kill cancer cell. I will tell you the mechanisms. Compound must be non-toxic, and since we use in our body, compound should have some solubility in water. And uh, as I said, we want this compound to be adsorbed on the cancer cells. So a uh, preferential adsorption on the cancer cells, we, we want this compound. And the strong absorption band uh, in the 600, uh, 900 nanometer region. This is important, I will tell you the reason soon. And the relatively stable excited states. A compound, polyphenol or phthalocyanin compound, which has a relatively stable excited state, contains zinc, aluminium, these metals, not iron or cobalt. Okay? Now, this sheet shows the absorption spectra of phthalocyanin here. Okay, phthalocyanin. And this uh, bra pale brown region indicates the penetration rate of the uh, light to our skin. If we use a light of 550 nanometer, light can uh, be, light can pass only, you know, this uh, light of this wavelength can pass only 10% of our skin. If we use a 650 nanometer, about 40%. If we use a 680, 90% of the light can pass through us. If we use a light of 800, or 100% of light can, pass our, our organ. So if you see uh, the sun in this way, you can see, you know, if you see a sun in this way, you can see the orange the, between the fingers. Fingers become orange. That is because uh, some light is uh, passing through our body. And, and this is important, okay? So the phthalocyanin has a strong absorption here, where 90% of the light can pass. So this sheet shows the mechanisms. Ground state, okay, phthalocyanin ground state by irradiation, by adsorbing light, for example, over 680, because the 680 nanometer there is a strong absorption. And then uh, the phthalocyanin is, uh, it goes to an excited state. From excited singlet state, 
it changes to an excited triplet state by the mechanisms called inter-system crossing. And in our body, there is oxygen. Ground state of oxygen is a triplet state. So triplet state phthalocyanin, triplet state oxygen, energy transfer occurs very effectively. And uh, so this oxygen obtained energy become a singlet oxygen. So this is a activated, excited oxygen. And this is occurring on the surface of a, a cancer cell. Okay, so this you know, uh, oxygen which has energy can kill the uh, cancer cells uh, oxidatively. So this is a mechanism. So this is an example. Old lady who has a cancer here, okay? Then uh, this is after a while, you know, it become better and finally healed. And this is a leg, cancer here, uh, some days later, and later completely healed. This is a young lady, although we cannot see well, here, you know, here is a cancer. We inject porcelain or phthalocyanin, it absorbs preferentially on the cancer cell here, and then we irradiate here from outside, irradiate here. Then, uh, you know, as I said, First, you know, the dye, porcelain or phthalocyanin is a, uh, obtain energy, goes to an excited singlet state, and then that porcelain changes to a triplet excited state, from triplet excited state to a ground state oxygen energy transfers, and then the oxygen is then uh, obtain energy, goes to a singlet oxygen, and then uh, this oxygen having uh, energy kill cancer cells. So, you know, a few days later, this lady is here. And here, nose too, you see? Die, for healing or after signing, and the irradiation of light here, healed. The, and this is an old person. Here is a, a cancer. Cancer here, you see? Here, and several days later, healed. This is an old man. Cancer, few days later, healed. Nice, right? I just stop, I just stop because uh, time is up. You see, application of phthalocyanins in the society, dyes and pigments, dyes and pigments, this is a cup of phthalocyanin. As I said, more than 50,000 tons of phthalocyanins are produced in the year in the world. So more than 90% of the blue color are from this cup of phthalocyanin. Charge generation material is in zero graphy. When you make a copy, Machine side is uh, charged uh, negative, and the ink side, ink side is charged positive. So because of a static interaction, ink is absorbed, okay? And uh, catalyst for sulfur removing processes in the fuel industry. If the crude oil contains sulfur, it's very dangerous because if we use that in the engine, and, uh, you know, uh, engine, in the engine, we combust oils at high temperature, oxygen. It produces a concentrated sulfuric acid. Then uh, it d d breaks the uh, engine. So we have to remove the uh, sulfur from crude oil. And for that purpose, cobalt phthalocyanin is used. And photodynamic therapy of cancer, aluminum, zinc, silicon. Optical computer lead light discs. Compact disc, if you see the surface of a compact disc, it sometimes reflects just like a rainbow. That's my compound. My compound. Okay? <coughs> and as a deodorant, and uh, germicide antibacterial agent, and uh, this, yeah, and other field of research here. But recently, very two years ago, this function was found. A girl is smiling. Why? This is a cream containing phthalocyanin. We found that uh, this cream removes wrinkles. So this sells very well. Very well. Okay? And finally this one. Thank you very much. Do you notice? Obrigado. <laughs> but do you know this one? Japanese, thank you. Arigato. Do you know such a similarity? Yeah. You know? Our thank you. Our thank 
our arigato comes from Portuguese. So it was uh, introduced into Japan 400 years ago. Okay, not many Japanese people know this. But, uh, okay. So anyway, thank you very much. Obrigado.